This video is sponsored by Raycon. <laughs> it is I. <laughs> I am the wicked witch of YouTube to uh, curse you with uh, another very cringy movie. <laughs> I feel like Billie Eilish up in here. I <laughs> can't do anything. And this nose. It can be a chin too. Maybe Leafy should get this. Today, we're going to be talking about The Witches 2020. If you watched my video on the sand, then you might have noticed the little Easter egg in the beginning. I know it's not October, so maybe this video isn't super relevant right now, but hey, in a perfect world, every day is Halloween, I think, so why not make a random movie about witches in December? For those that don't know, The Witches was originally a novel by Roald Dahl. It's one of his many masterpieces, among Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Matilda, James and the Giant Peach, you name it. And then in the year 1990, a movie was released called The Witches. I watched this movie when I was like eight years old and it scarred me for life. Just check out what the Grand High Witch looks like in this movie and you'll definitely understand why I couldn't sleep for like a week straight. Especially since this movie was so adamant on telling the viewer, witches are real. Witches are real, they're real. Did you know they're real? As an adult hearing that they were remaking it, I was kind of thrilled about that. I was like, oh, cool. I can't wait to see what they do with it. And then they did this with it. I'm seeing hundreds of repulsive little brats playing in the sand, and it's putting me right off my bed. Hearing that was being written and directed by Robert Zemeckis, I was kind of excited to watch the movie, since he was the brain behind some classics like Back to the Future, Back to the Future 2, Cast Away. So yeah, Robert Zemeckis made The Witches 2020, and the Grand High Witch is played by Anne Hathaway. They should have just put Angelica Huston in again. I mean, she's older now and probably scarier looking than she was when she was younger. And she has this witchy demeanor about her, you know? But yeah, I guess put Anne Hathaway in there because she's totally a scary looking lady. I wouldn't say that I hate Anne Hathaway's performance, but I'd be lying if I didn't cringe. Rubbed out, squashed, squeaked, and fretted. A lot. A lot. You are a heap of ink for nothing. And then you have articles like this. The Witches is worth watching for Anne Hathaway's performance. Yes, if you want to cringe into oblivion. Granted, it's not just Anne Hathaway's performance. The effects make it way worse. And I'm sure Robert Zemeckis pushed her to go way over the top. I've seen Anne Hathaway perform exceptionally well before, but this was definitely not my favorite. I definitely would have preferred it a lot more if they used practical effects instead of making her look so cartoonish, but that is a world that we don't live in. The 2020 remake starts with a very childish narration by Chris Rock. Witches are as real as a rock in your shoe. I'm not sure if they expected only people from the ages of 6 to 12 to watch this movie, but... The tricky thing with snow is... It's slippery. You'd assume that they would try to make it appealing for all audiences, especially since the 1990 version is so creepy and it almost feels like these witches could be real. In the 2020 version, it's not the case at all. <laughs> In this movie, this witch has a snake wrapped around her and they could have obviously used a real snake, but they decided not to for some reason. In the 1990 version, she has a real snake and it worked out perfectly fine. The Grand High Witch in this story has a cat, and obviously in the 2020 remake, the cat is also CGI. Unless you have billions and billions of dollars to put into CGI, just don't, because it's gonna look like shit. So for those that don't know how the story goes, the grandma tells Luke about witches. She describes them with a bunch of detail, like they're all bald, they don't have toes like humans do, they have claws, but they hide in plain sight with gloves and wigs and stuff. In the 2020 version, they show us how the grandma encountered the witch. In the new version, she kind of comes across as a random witch expert. A seminar has reconnected. So eventually the grandma brings the son to this nice hotel. For whatever reason, Robert Zemeckis desperately wanted the witch to stay in room number 666. Do you get it? Because that's an evil number and witches are evil. And in this story, uh, the grandma and the son are in a room directly above the Grand High Witch. They're on floor four in room 766, which obviously makes no sense. But yeah, Luke is like, how could they possibly have room 766 on floor four? And the grandma's like, well, 
They just do. <laughs> so then we meet all the witches. There's like a thousand of them. They all come into this hotel. And the way they talk is completely unnatural and weird. You seem like the sort of man who loves a precious. And not in like an endearing, creepy way that, you know, fits the character and, you know, makes them more witchy. It's just stupid. Exactly. You see, girls? He would exterminate those brats. You look marvelous. Mm. I wish I could say the same for you, Nick. We're very happy to have you. Yes. Delighted. Shall I sign or something? Oh, no, 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 no. Just like any normal human with his head screwed on right. They're trying too hard. It almost sounds like they're parodying the 1990 version. Not, you know, acting out their character. One strange thing that these witches can do in all three versions of this story is that they have big nostrils so they can smell little children easier. However, in the 2020 version, the grandma tells the son that, oh, their nostrils can, can grow up to eight inches wide. And I was like, oh, that's kind of stupid. That's probably just something that she thought they could do, but they can't actually do. No, they can actually do that. <laughs> I'm not sure if the movie was trying to make me laugh in this scene. <laughs> in the 1990 version, you're disgusted by the witches. In the 2020 version, they might as well be dressed in clown costumes. <laughs> Seriously. They do this thing with the witches in this movie that's really stupid, and I hate it. They basically have, like, Joker smiles, and nobody is weirded out that these witches have this strange large scar on their cheeks it's not like they use makeup or anything to cover these lines they just let them show you know it's totally normal to have a cult of like 30 women all with the same smile scar on their face why what oh you can't let your bald head show but these lines on your face that will definitely not arouse suspicion at all. So yeah, Luke has these two pet mice and he goes to this big open hall area and he starts playing with the mice. You know, he's trying to get them to balance on some strings, but then the witches come into the room. So he hides and then there's this big meeting. And this is one of those scenes, guys. Get your cringe goggles on because you're going to need them. Yeah, so Anne Hathaway takes off her gloves and she has hands that look like this. And apparently there was a lot of outrage because there are a lot of people out there that actually have hands that look like that. And they thought that that was very insensitive. And then Anne Hathaway responded to this and she was like, yeah, I'm sorry, didn't mean to. The best part is they could have easily avoided this if they just did what they did in the 1990 version. Just give them long ass fingers and claws. They don't have three fingers. Also, they describe in the original that the witches have no toes. But in this one, the witches do have a toe, but just one toe, just one long middle bird talon. In this scene, they take their wigs off, they take their gloves off and their shoes off and they let their witchiness run wild. Rubbed out, squeetered on They cause a shit ton of commotion in this room. And nobody comes in, it's weird. So yeah, the Grand High Witch promised this kid some chocolate if he came to this room at a certain time. And yeah, I guess the fat kid loves chocolate, so he goes to the room. Start screaming for your life, you dumb little shit! Are you serious? All the witches are disguised again, and the kid walks up to the podium area, and he's like, where is my chocolate? I gave you for my chocolate, give it to me. Give me my chocolate. Give it to me. Give me it. To... Give me, give me. It's kind of strange how badly this kid wants chocolate. I think he has an issue. Bring this kid to a psych ward. <laughs> So yeah, the witch gives him his chocolate, and unbeknownst to him, the chocolate has this potion in it that will turn him into a mouse. It's very strange, he hardly even knows that he turned into a mouse. What's the big idea? Where's my chocolate? He's now three inches tall, but he just doesn't realize. <laughs> it's so weird. And then the witches finally smell Luke underneath the stage. They grab him from under there, and they force feed him potion and he turns into a mouse. In the 1990 version, the cinematography when Luke is turning into a mouse is so well done. They give the viewer this sense of shrinking. So Luke and the fat kid are now mice, and Luke finds out that his pet mouse was also a child at one point, but the witches turned them into a mouse. So we have three children that are now mice running around the hotel. The movie kind of turns into Ratatouille at this point. There's a scene in both movies where the mice ride an elevator, except in the 2020 version, they're just miraculously missed 
by the people in the elevator, which makes zero sense, right? They would definitely notice the mice running into the elevator and they would freak out. The mice decide that the way they're going to get back at the witches is by putting their own potion into their pea soup. So they get a hold of one of the witch's potions, they go into the kitchen and they pour it into the pea soup. The grandma has the great idea to tell the fat kid's parents that their kid is now a mouse. <laughs> Why would you ever do that? Obviously, they would never believe you. Although in the 1990 version, they do this as well. And uh, yeah, it's stupid in both movies. <laughs> so yeah, all of the witches are at dinner and they start eating the pea soup and they all start farting the potion and blasting into the sky, turning into mice. I mean, they look more like rats, probably rats. Somehow Anne Hathaway recognizes the grandma from when she was a child. I'm sorry, but if you see someone when they're seven years old and then you see them again when they're a grandma, you're not going to recognize them. But miraculously, this witch does. I mean, it's a witch, so it's magic. So yeah, the Grand High Witch doesn't eat the pea soup because she's distracted by the grandma. So the mice uh, think up this plan to turn the Grand High Witch into a mouse by clamping her toes with mouse traps. And then when they clamp her toes, she will, you know, open her mouth in pain, like, ah! and then, <laughs> And then they will launch the potion into the air and it will land into her mouth when she's opening her mouth from pain. Flawless plan. And it works out flawlessly, you know, because it's a flawless plan. And then they end up feeding her to her CGI cat. No, don't think about food. Uh <laughs> The kids stay mice. In fact, they like being mice. Yeah, their shorter lifespans are great. So yeah, they fast forward to today and the narrator is the same kid, but an old mouse. And he's like holding a presentation for a bunch of children telling them about witches. I guess they're building up an army of kids to go hunt witches. What kind of parent would sign off on their kid going on a witch hunt? Now, did Robert Zemeckis think at all about this plot? Or was he like, if kids are the main character, then it's for kids and we can just make it as stupid as possible. <laughs> That must be what he was thinking. And they don't do anything cool with the witches in this 2020 version. They just turn kids into animals and that's it. In the 1990 version, they do this really awesome thing with a painting. So this girl goes missing from this town. The witches take her and her father ends up seeing her in one of his paintings, forever staring into the living room of this life that she once had. She even ages in the painting and eventually she was no longer in the painting. It's just a really cool thing that the witches did to this kid that wasn't just turn them into a random animal. Hmm. I just wish that this new movie thought of some creative and eerie way for the witches to use their magic that makes people think that's interesting, you know? But I guess they just didn't care enough. Just another reason to pile on top of the many reasons why the 1990 version is superior. And the Grand High Witch isn't cringe. She's convincingly a tyrannical and ruthless leader to all these other witches. And when she lashes out and kills one of her fellow witches, Very long. you're like, holy shit. She's the big baddie. Don't mess with her. When Anne Hathaway kills one of the witches. Do you have a plan? How can we possibly wipe out every child? You're like, oh, why aren't they fighting back? <laughs> and the cinematography is so much better in this movie. They do these close-up shots on the witches' faces that makes you feel claustrophobic. It kind of makes you want to sit back in your seat because <laughs> you don't want to be near these people, but the camera just wants to shove itself in their faces. Before CGI and computers, people were forced to be super creative when they made movies like this, and they came out so good. That's not to say that there isn't a place for CGI and stuff like that, but I just wish we didn't rely on it so much nowadays. In the 1990 version, there's a scene where Angelica Huston pushes a baby carriage down a hill towards a cliff. And it's just like a big joke to her. And Luke just barely catches the carriage in time. It shows how carefree and evil these witches truly are. I swear to God, when I went to the supermarket after seeing this movie, I would look at like the women around me and try and find out if they are witches or not. I'd be like, are they wearing gloves? Does their hair look fake? Just stay away from them. I'm like, oh God, <laughs> I don't want to... <laughs>
I don't want to get taken. Another strange change from the 1990 film is that there was one witch that the Grand High Witch was kind of rude and cruel to, and so she didn't attend dinner. So she didn't end up being turned into a mouse. This witch visits Luke's house at the very end of the movie and ends up turning Luke and Bruno back into children. Both of the movies end with Luke and the grandma finding a shit ton of money and a book of all of the known witch addresses. So their plan is to use all this money to track down all the witches and turn them into mice. This is one instance where I kind of agree with the 2020 version instead of the older version, because in the older version, they showed that these witches have the capacity to be good because there was a good witch at the end, but they still want to go to America, find all these witches, and turn them into mice. They don't even give them a chance. They don't care who they are. That's kind of weird. <laughs> So yeah, that's it guys, that's the witches. If you haven't seen the 1990 version, I highly suggest that you do see it. Don't see the 2020 version, <laughs> it's terrible. If you have any other movies that you'd like me to review, then put them in the comment section down below. And by the way guys, if you like witches, you like creepy stuff, guess what? New clothing over at AlienClothing.com. Check out this shirt, regular smiley, dead smiley, and alien embroidery we're stepping up the game ladies and gentlemen we also have a bunch of other new stuff over there so if you're interested go to alienclone.com and check it out and now for a word from today's sponsor raycon i've been using raycon for months now i use them every day when i walk my dog or when i work out they have a great noise isolating fit they have six hours of playtime, seamless bluetooth pairing they're half the price of other premium audio brands they come in a bunch of different colors their sleek design makes them hardly noticeable in your ears and they don't hurt my ears at all while I'm wearing them. They're genuinely really comfortable earbuds. Raycons make a great holiday gift because you can use them wherever you go, whether you're at work or you're at home working out. Raycons being really generous for the holidays, so on top of their everyday great prices, they're offering all of you guys 15% off right now. So if you're not sure what to get your loved ones this holiday season, consider buying them Raycon earbuds. Click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com slash to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. So if you're in the market for some earbuds, I would definitely recommend Raycon. Thanks again, Raycon, for sponsoring this video. I really appreciate it. Your earbuds are amazing, and I suspect I will continue to tell people about them. Thanks again to Raycon for sponsoring this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.